For 24-year-old Leng So, traveling by bus is much more than just a way to get to his destination. It is also his passion. He had developed a profound love for buses as a child. As his parents would often take him out on bus rides from on Mokyo, where they live. My parents often took me to Toopeo on bus service AT8 and Chinatown on service CT8. I love taking the double-decker buses on service AT8 and would often choose the front seat on the upper deck, probably because of how nice the view was from up there. Years later, buses continue to play a big role in Mr. So's life, and he has even turned his passion into his livelihood. The private bus driver told today, if I have the time to spare, I would definitely choose the bus over traveling by MRT, as there would be a high chance for me to be able to get a seat and enjoy the passing scenery. It is also more relaxing than a train ride. Mr. So belongs to a community of bus spotters, transport enthusiasts, passionate about spotting models of buses on the roads. Another member of the community, 24-year-old Matthew Tay, who lives in Hogang and had been previously featured by Today, said, On many occasions, when I needed to head to the west, I would rather change three to four buses than take that long MRT ride, which requires me to change lines two to three times. Because I can get a seat on the bus and enjoy the views outside while learning about the bus route. He added that unlike the majority of commuters, he does not wear any earpiece on his bus journeys. Because he enjoys simply looking out the window and hearing the natural sounds of his surroundings. Sometimes, I can tell if the bus has a mechanical problem just by hearing how the engine sounds and the gear shifts. Mr. Tay added. Even for commuters, who may not share as deep an emotional connection with buses as Mr. So and Mr. Tay, the mode of transport still has its own allure for practical reasons. Miss W. Rita, a 75-year-old cleaning attendant, said that buses are sometimes a more convenient option than the train. For example, getting to her workplace at Serangoon North is quicker by bus. As the office is just three bus stops away from where she lives. Currently, there is no MRT line serving the Serangoon North neighborhood, although the station is expected to be a part of the upcoming Cross Island Line. Passenger service for the line's first phase, which will include Serangoon North, is slated to start in 2030. Another regular bus commuter, Mr. Lam K. L., told today that given the choice, he would usually opt to take the bus over the MRT. The train network is extensive, but sometimes, it may take two or three train changes to reach your desired stop. So, if there's a direct bus, then of course, I will take the direct bus, said the 38-year-old, who works in the technology sector. Mr. Lam, who has an 11-month-old daughter, added that it is generally easier to get a seat on the bus, as well as bring his child's stroller and board. For the train, when you push the pram, you cannot push it up the escalator. You have to wait for the lift and able-bodied people will also take the lift. He estimates that about 70% of the trips he makes by public transport are by bus. Given the continuing appeal of buses, despite the proliferation of the MRT lines, it was perhaps not surprising that the Land Transport Authority's LTA announcement on November 17 that it would withdraw bus service 167. Due to a decrease in its ridership, triggered an outcry from commuters. The authority later reversed its decision on November 28, saying in a Facebook post that it would retain the bus service for now and instead operate it at 30-minute intervals throughout the day. Still, such incidents of bus service rationalization, where services are withdrawn, merge or have their operating frequency or hours reduced due to low commuter demand, are not new. In its annual report for 2021-2022, 
LTA noted that bus rationalization is an inevitable process as the country grows its land transport system. According to the authority's website, there are currently more than 300 bus services plying the island. In the case of Bus Service 167, LTA said that it had seen more commuters shifting their travel to the MRT since the third stage of the Thomson East Coast Line opened in November 2022. This meant ridership for parallel bus services, like Bus Service 167, dropped significantly and there was a need to reduce duplication and reallocate finite bus resources. In 2020, changes were also made to some bus services plying Bukit Panjang as ridership for these bus routes, which ran parallel to the downtown line, dropped sharply since the opening of the MRT line's second phase in December 2015. And it is likely that more bus services will be rationalised over time, given the government's plan to ensure 8 in 10 households will be within a 10-minute walk of a train station by 2030. Transport analysts told today that the opening of new MRT lines could lead to a shift in commuters' travel and usage patterns, with some riders opting to shift their commute from bus to MRT. Some degree of rationalisation would hence be necessary to prevent duplication and to not waste resources, they added. Yet, while the public may understand that this needs to be done, members of parliament MPs and bus commuters interviewed by today said that the impact and inconvenience of such rationalisation ought to be minimised. This could be done through a gradual phasing out of the bus service as opposed to a complete withdrawal following a notice period. Or having the authorities consult affected commuters on the proposed changes prior to finalising and implementing them, they added. Singapore adopts a hub-and-spoke model for its public transport network. Relying on buses a light rapid transit to serve as feeder services, bringing commuters to MRT stations or bus interchanges. Under this model, the rail network would remain the backbone of the country's public transport system. Given its higher speed and capacity, there are no official statistics on the number of bus services that have been rationalised. According to the Land Transport Guru blog, which was set up by self-professed transport enthusiasts, more than 30 bus services were rationalised between 2019 and this year. This includes the withdrawal of night and leisure bus services and changes to the operating hours of express bus services like 12E, 851E and 960E. Responding to today's queries, an LTA spokesperson did not provide figures but said that the authority periodically reviews and makes adjustments to Singapore's bus network in response to new developments and changing travel patterns. For example, when a new MRT line or station opens, commuters in the area would often see time savings for their journeys, which would in turn impact their travel patterns, as more consumers make the switch from buses to the MRT. As the ridership changes and stabilizes, the authority would review and make adjustments to relevant bus services to ensure that the bus and rail networks continue to complement each other. Nevertheless, the spokesperson reiterated that buses continue to play an important role in Singapore's transport system. Besides complementing the rail system by connecting commuters to MRT stations, our bus services connect residents to community amenities and serve commuters along corridors which are currently not well served by the rail network, the spokesperson said. Making adjustments to the bus network would help to ensure that finite resources, including financial subsidies, as well as buses and bus captains, are allocated appropriately to serve the needs of commuters. In this way, LTA is able to introduce a man bus services to cater to new estates or improve first and last mile connections while maintaining cost discipline on behalf of commuters and taxpayers. 
who would otherwise have to pay higher fares and taxes if the subsidies for bus services keep on increasing over time, the spokesperson added. Member of Parliament Dr. Lim Wikayak PAP Sambuang, whose residents would be affected by changes to bus service 167, said, by and large, residents are familiar with the reasons that with MRT lines built, there is a need for LTA to review existing bus services to reduce duplication of services. Ensure resources are optimised and to keep operations more cost-efficient. Nevertheless, these changes still tangibly affect residents, he added. For example, if bus service 167 had been withdrawn, a group of residents would lose the use of the bus service along Sambuang Road that takes them to the MRT station. Other residents along Canberra Link would also lose the service. Dr Lim noted. And while bus service 859 would be amended to serve this group of residents, with the added benefit that bus service 859 now directly connects them to Chungpang Market on the revised route. The residents would still have to transfer to bus service 980 if they were headed towards the city, he added. There are other residents who are affected by the changes, whether big or small which may not be addressed. Any changes will change existing travel habits and will cause inconveniences, said Dr Lim. To this end, Dr Lim said that he and his team actively seek out feedback on the ground and convey this to LTA. To consider ways to address the feedback without losing the rationale of the review exercise. Commuters who regularly travel by buses told today, that a main draw for them is the convenience of the direct connectivity that buses provide to their destinations, even if it may sometimes translate to a longer travel time. For senior citizens like Miss Rita, travelling by MRT means possibly having to walk from the train station to her destination after alighting. If it is still located a distance away. Additionally, Travelling by MRT means she has to go through the station's gantry before making her way to the platform, which could be rather cumbersome. She said. In other instances, these bus journeys not only provide point-to-point -point connectivity but could even be quicker than their real alternatives due to the availability of express buses plying the route. This is the case for Mr Lam, who has the option of an express bus that goes directly from his home to his workplace. A green, 26-year-old Ness Farihin said, Usually, I would go by the most convenient way. But not many know that a 100% bus journey can actually be the fastest way to get around, like from Sengkong to the airport via bus service 110, or from Woodlands to Sengkong via bus service 161. Beyond merely connecting commuters to their destinations, buses also hold a special place in the hearts of bus spotters like Mr. Ness, Mr. So and Mr. Tay. They told today that they are largely drawn to their huge variety of bus types, different models, each with their own unique bodyworks, gearboxes, manufacturer types, and engine performances. For each of them, the vehicle also carries a unique slice of nostalgia, as they could still recall key moments in their childhood that sparked their love for the mode of transport. Mr. Tay, who grew up in Ho Gang, near a now defunct bus interchange, remembers taking an interest in the buses that plied the streets near his home. They sounded loud, and the different variety of them double. Single deck, air conditioned, and non air conditioned caught my attention. I started to draw them on pieces of scrap paper, and my parents took notice of this and fueled the hobby by buying me bus toys and bringing me to different bus interchanges to experience long bus rides and collect bus service guides. This interest evolved over the years to collecting bus models and then bus memorabilia by heading to the scrapyard when I was about 14 to 15 years old, with a group of friends. And more recently, 
The interest to drive buses, when I was 22 years old, said Mr. Tay, who now works as a bus operations supervisor. For Mr. Ness, it began when he was five years old, when his father used to bring him out for joyrides around the island. By bus. Going on these trips amplified his love for buses, as he gained exposure to the different bus models and service routes. This eventually led him to pursue a career in the industry, starting off as a bus captain for public buses. Before progressing to the role of an operations support officer with a private bus company that he holds today, Mr. Jamin Lee, 22, told today that he became intrigued by buses as a child after his aunt frequently took him to Chinatown from his home in Choa Chu Kong on bus service 190. In those days, there were bendy buses deployed on service 190 which was the highlight of my trip to Chinatown as bendy buses were very fun to ride and it felt like riding a roller coaster over the bumps on the road. Said Mr. Lee, a private bus driver. Bendy buses refer to articulated buses, single-deck buses that comprise two or more sections linked by a pivoting joint. Because of their love for the vehicles, the bus spotters make an effort to chase, snap, and ride old buses that were due for retirement at times, even making trips overseas to try and chase these buses. And while there's maybe a special connection, they told today that the public outcry over the changes to Bus Service 167 suggested that buses and long bus rides have their own practical appeal. Though he was not directly affected by the changes, Mr. Ness added, withdrawing 167 and pushing the crowd to utilize the MRT to its fullest extent just restricts the level of convenience that is faced by commuters and residents alike along the route. Service 167 has been operating since 1974 for close to 50 years across four different operators. Why take away a piece of heritage when it still serves a purpose, he said. Several MPs told today that they frequently receive bus-related feedback from residents. At Bidot Reservoir, for example, residents' common concerns involve decreased bus frequencies for services that connect them to Bidot Reservoir MRT Station and Bidot Interchange, issues that arose after the removal of several bus routes in late 2021. Said MP Gerald Jayam WPL Janit, who oversees the ward. Mr. Jayam added that he has also made multiple appeals to LTA to increase the frequency of the remaining bus service 228. The key question is what is an acceptable frequency of feeder bus services to the closest MRT station, he said. To establish public transportation as the favoured travel mode. Especially in our pursuit of environmental sustainability, we must ensure that commuters do not experience a reduction in service levels because of a decrease in the frequency of bus services, he added.